Hello, hello, hello. I got questions, y'all. Y'all know what it is. Are your boundaries loose or are they rigid or are they healthy? Let's talk about it. If you didn't know, you're now tuned in to another episode of a Melanated Hypothesis podcast where we are retraining our brains and becoming who we are destined to be. I'm your host, Tori V, aka The Compassion Coach, and I have been thinking... So let's get into it. Woo -woo. All right. So I was so excited to record this. I've been waiting. I've been sitting here writing my notes, looking at myself in the camera like, girl, yes, you better flap them wings, okay? And I was talking to my sister earlier. She was just like, her boundaries are she got to look flattering 24-7. Like she don't want them to see to come up. That This is what I'm, this is my interpretation of what she said. And so I'm like, mm. Sometimes I want to look flattering and everything, but like I got wings right now. <laughs> like I got wings right now. So I just want to show my wings. Like I just want to show the process of what we're doing, becoming, right? And so now my boundary is just being myself, loving the body that I'm in. And literally, what can you, you know what I'm saying? Like, what are you going to? do to me like for loving my body at this stage then when it get a little bit better then when it get a little bit better then one day you're gonna look at this video you could be like victoria would you tape your arms up like what happened where they go and, I, and i'm gonna be like yeah that's the gym baby them pull-ups <laughs> but anyway um i have some notes y'all and so i want to get into it because what are boundaries and like the power of boundaries how can boundaries actually help me okay because let me tell you on the path, like we're being honest, you know. Like I feel like Pastor Michael Todd. This this is a hot church. Like, <laughs> like we've been we've been uh, honest, open, and transparent here, right? So my boundaries for the longest time have been loose. For the longest time have been loose, but I didn't even know about boundaries. And I remember actually I was having a conversation with my mom maybe a year ago. Or so and I was telling her that. When she started developing her boundaries, I saw it, but I didn't understand why she was using it on me. Like, like I've always been to be me and just do whatever and be free. Like, why are you telling me I can't do stuff now? Like, what's that about? What I got to do with any of that? So, let's talk about it. Boundaries. First of all, what is a boundary? <laughs> what is a boundary? So, what I define boundaries as is a guideline that protects your energy and tells people how to treat you. So when I when I when I talk about like when we talk about red flags, a red flag being anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, when you when you know that you have a red flag or this is a red flag, you don't like people just showing up at your house, you set a boundary. Right? You set the boundary so that, that can protect your energy. So that people know how to treat you. I'm sorry, y'all. It's some hair or something going on. Yeah. It was some hair going to just get that on the body there because I don't like that. But you want to set your boundary. You want to say, hey, if you're going to come over, you got to make sure that you call first. Right? And then we have to set a consequence. Because if you don't call, I'm not going to open the door. That's my boundary. My grandfather has a boundary like that, actually. If you, if you just show up to his house... He won't open the door, right? And sometimes it sounds pretty harsh, but that's not that's not his problem. That's not your problem. You set the boundary. Everybody know that. Like for me, people know that my phone is going to be on in silence, right? If you really want to get in contact with me, call me twice. If it is an emergency, you need to call 911 because I'm, what am I going to do? Like, right? Boundaries, right? I'm being very open and transparent. I'm not going to stress over like, you get what I'm saying? Like, I'm not going to, because I had loose boundaries before. So if you call me and what seems like an emergency to you, I'm going to be in this space. Like, oh my goodness, we'll be good. So I had to put a boundary up. If it's really an emergency, you need to call 911. <laughs> okay. Once everything is stabilized, hit me up. Okay. We can say a prayer. You feel me? I come be emotional support, but don't call me and then, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to pull up trying to be the protector. Oh, somebody hurt my baby. I'm, fight. I'm ready to fight. Like, no, that's dysfunction in my energy. So I have to set properties up, guidelines up for whatever my boundary is. 
So that's number one, what boundaries are. And um, I put a little asterisk. Okay, no, 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 no. We're going to do this in order because the last video, I wrote some stuff down and I did not read the paper. <laughs> okay? And so we are becoming who we are destined to be. So each video should get a little bit better. All the content should get a little bit better. Does that mean that it's always going to get better the next one? No, it might take three or four. Okay? But you're going to see the improvement when you zoom out and you look at what I'm doing. Right? And so that's how I feel all life should be. Like, we should all see the improvement when we zoom out and be like, okay, I used to get mad. You know, when Ho said little stuff like X, Y, and Z, I used to get mad, be buck. Like, who? But now I just be like, bless you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, like, it's a it's a process. We should be able to see that growth within us. So, anyhow. The guidelines. Okay, so what I wrote is, if you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. And I know, how many people know that? Like, do you really know that? Comment below if you've heard that before. But when I'm saying that and you don't have any boundaries, your boundaries are too loose like mine was, right? And I don't mean that now mine is all healthy. Like, I still got some boundaries. It's like, mm, are you giving too much of your time? <laughs> I still have that, right? Some of us have rigid boundaries. We don't trust nobody. You can't have nothing. Like you get you get what I'm saying. I can't now don't even ask her for you know she she stingy with the cookies. Like me and Reese Cups, I had a really bad relationship. Like like I would definitely share the first cup, but you gotta ask. Like if you was to just take a cup, that's a part of my boundaries, okay? But I would share the first one. But if I'm on the last one, no sir. Yeah, my boundaries are strict. <laughs> You cannot have my last Reese cup. I'm not playing, dog. Like, I don't, you went in the freezer and I saw it and thought, it's a problem. <laughs> it is a problem. You mad over food? Yes, I am. <laughs> yes, I. that's part of my boundaries, <laughs> okay? If you wanted some, I would have bought you one, okay? Don't just come in here eating my stuff, right? <laughs> but what I'm saying is, boundaries right now i don't be tripping and so somebody recently ate a reese cup that i had in the freezer and i was just like and it was a big cup too like yes yeah, 200 calories like i definitely planned that out okay and you just gonna eat that like <laughs> really but i've been working on myself that's not that's not a strict boundary for me anymore because it was super unhealthy first of all you turn into food way too much like you like Food is just food. Let it, let it come and go. You don't have to be super strict on it. Am I still kind of, do I still have some guidelines around my food? Like, don't be trying to touch my food. Don't be eating off my plate. You know what I mean? Like, eggs first. I had, that's a big thing. Eggs, just eggs. Like, don't just come in my house grabbing stuff. I don't like that. What is that? <laughs> don't do that. Eggs if you need something. So, um, standing for something, right? So, in that moment, I was standing for that Reese Cup. <laughs> In that moment, I was standing for that Reese Cup. But let's say it wasn't food, right? Let's say it was um, some type of relationship that I was in. I was in a relationship where I didn't stand for the things that I believed in. I just kind of sat back, observed, and watched and saw what everybody else was doing, right? And so then when things happened, like we were in Atlanta, and it was this dude hitting this woman in the middle, middle of the street, in the medium, okay? I'm around a whole bunch of dudes. They got 30s, 40s, 50s, Glocks, 10s, and like... Ain't nobody finna help this lady. Like, I had a problem with that. I grabbed the gun off the ground. Like, I mean, I'm gonna stand for something. Like, I don't know what y'all doing. <laughs> all right. This this shit got a 30 on it. I don't even know how to use that. But <laughs> all right, I blow this bitch in the air <laughs> and, and get some attention around this motherfucker. <laughs> Excuse me, Lord. But I I'm gonna make something happen because I stand for something. You are not just gonna be in my face hitting on a woman. That's a boundary that's crossed for me, right? That's like a non-negotiable, right? We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. But I definitely non-negotiable. So what do you stand for? Because, baby, you have to stand for something. You cannot be just the nice person. Trust me. I was... I was trying to be the nice girl. Like, no, I'm no, no, they got attitudes and they do it. I'm nice. You want to come over here to, to Nice Row Records? Like, no, forget all that, okay? Forget all that. You have to stand for something for yourself. If you don't like 
guacamole and your boyfriend Mexican and he keeps trying to make you eat this guacamole? No, you have to stand for this. I don't like it. Okay. I don't like it. <laughs> okay. If you are in an environment where everybody is doing something that you, that does, doesn't sit well with you, create that boundary, stand for that. I'm not going over there because they do that thing that I don't do. I have stopped smoking. I'm no longer, a sm I don't identify as a smoker anymore. So I'm not going to hang with them because that's all they identify as. Right. So now what's different. I have to put up a boundary. We cool all that. You want to go bowling? Okay, we can go bowling, but I'm not going to come over there because I stand for something, right? And that doesn't take anything away from you as a person who may not stand for that thing. I'm not talking about you, we're talking about them. You know, that doesn't take anything away from them, right? Because you are standing for something, but they have to get on that journey as well. And the only thing you can do in this moment is be the change, right? So I think I wrote that down, child, but... <laughs> Let me see. Because no, because I got to look at this paper because my mind uh, is, is almost like ADHD, but just I'm just free. Like, I just allow myself to be free. I do not put limitations on my thoughts. So sometimes it is hard to just, like, buckle down on that. And it's fine. Like, I tell people what it is. I set the boundary. Hey, listen. <laughs> sometimes I'm, like, I'm high-functioning autistic because I understand autistic and the intellectual disabilities. And it's like, okay, sometimes I cannot just slow the fuck down. Like, okay. And that looks like autism. So it's easier for me to say that because people understand that, but it's just needing to breathe and needing to slow down manually and being that, like, I'd be pumped about this stuff. What? I'd be so pumped about this. First of all, I'm pumped about getting the information to you. I'm pumped about giving the information to you and relearning it for myself. Because everything we teach, we relearn. We, we instill that back in us, right? So I need to keep making sure that I'm on my path of boundaries, right? So it's, anyway, so I'm going to look at my paper. So we already talked about if I don't stand for something. And then healthy boundaries are how you care and show self-respect for yourself. Being nice gets you used, period. And I wrote that down <laughs> and underlined it, period. Okay, being nice gets you used. Oh my goodness, they're from such and such and I just want to give them something that they never had. They're going to use you because they're not thinking like you. All your experiences brought you to this sweetheart that you have and that's beautiful, all right? But that's not going to get you nowhere in America. <laughs> like, you got to be real. You got to be able to sit back and scope what's going on and see who really has the heart that you have, who is really operating in the morals that you have, but maybe they just fell off a little bit and they need a little guidance, right? That's why coaches are, are, are amazing. And I love that it's coming into mentors and coaches. It's coming into like the mainstream because you want somebody that understands where you're going, where you're at, where you've been, right? And can lead you on a better path. Okay, see, I feel like I'm, I'm measuring off a little bit. But <laughs> getting used is a real thing. Not being able to decipher or have discernment between the energies that you are operating with. You have to have boundaries. Like part of being able to decipher and have discernment is having boundaries. Because I ain't even finna go in certain environments because now I have boundaries for myself, for my safety, right? I got boundaries because I want to be safe. And before I used to say things like I was raised by wolves. I'll do anything. I'll try anything once. Uh, you know what I mean? Like I didn't have no self-respect. I didn't have any self-worth. I didn't like, you know, like I try anything. We can do anything, whatever you want to do. Like not in anything, but like in a sense of like, I've been out here, me and my little Hyundai, we've been out here. So, like, I, you know, I sleep in my car in front of the pilot. I sleep in my car at the McDonald's. Like, I drive 14 hours straight to Dallas. Like, whatever, <laughs> whatever I need to do. But some things, some things weren't good for my boundaries. Like, some things I was doing, and I wrote that down, we're going to get to that. I was doing because I was buying friends right? Some people call it people pleasing. I like to call it what it is, buying friends, right? You people please. You want, oh, pick me, you know, oh, don't leave me. Oh, I'm a good time. And here's why I have all these things. Oh, you should give me your time and energy because I have, I was people pleasing, right? You set boundaries. You don't people please. You say what you need 
right? You, 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 you communicate it clearly what it is that you need and you have consequences around you not getting what you need. Like the camera's over here. I'm looking at myself sometimes, but I, but I feel you. I see you. You're, I, we're together. Okay. Sometimes. And I'm gonna look back at my paper because these are things that I actually wrote on my paper. So that's why they're coming up. They're just coming up out of order. So it doesn't, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. But I just want to respect your time, have boundaries on my time because I can be here all day. <laughs> I can literally be here all day. <laughs> so, um, show love to self by not allowing someone to use you. Exactly. So every Monday I do, um, self-love in action. I'm doing something for myself to show myself love. One of the best things I can do is set boundaries. Like I can have a Monday where it's about, I'm supposed to be doing stuff for myself, but spend all the time accepting calls because I didn't have any boundaries for myself, right? And so this, this thing that we're doing, we're building boundaries, it's a work in progress. Like, you don't just say, oh, yeah, you know what? She right. I'm going to make my boundary list now. And then next week is done. Like, you never mess up again. Like, you have you have to build the skill up. It is literally a skill for you to say no, right? Because um, when you think about boundaries and when you think about what it is we fear when we start people pleasing and whatnot, rejection. I don't want him to leave. I don't want her to leave. They're going to abandon me, right? Um, confrontation. When somebody, uh, I remember being in North Carolina when I lived in North Carolina, and my my slumlord landlord, he was, he had tried to come in the house. Like, are you tripping? And like, I know my rights. If anything else, I know the law. Like, right? So you can't just walk up in here. You tripping, bro. You tripping. And, um, but I'm, I had always been afraid of confrontation. So when I had to address him, like I have to be revved up to confront to have a confrontation. Like I gotta be mad and don't give a fuck about no boundaries. Like I don't care. Like at this point, you finna get, you know what I mean? But I don't typically get like that's not my my baseline. So if I'm not revved up, I'm chilling. And so if I'm chilling and I'm in a peaceful place and you come trying to take advantage of me, usually I would have closed in. In this particular moment, I had to stand up for myself. This is my house. I live here alone. You're tripping. You, you're trying to come in here. Y'all all looking in the window, being nosy. Like, I pay my rent. Like, what is you doing? So I came outside. I was standing on the porch. My coworker had came. She was standing on the porch next to me. And my whole body was shaking. I was shaking as I was trying to talk to this man and stand up for myself. The confrontation was literally making me physically shake because I had to put my boundaries, I had to 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 uh, be stern on my boundaries. No, you cannot come in here. You can't just walk into my house. Like, are you tripping? <laughs> are you tripping? Especially when I just uh, had the state come do an inspection and they say this house got 27 violations. Like, are you trying to walk in here just randomly on a Wednesday? You're tripping. <laughs> you are tripping. Do you hear me? So, I had to, that, that, that was one of the like most vivid moments of me standing up for my boundaries. I've been in a situation where I was with a guy and I didn't, I didn't stand on my boundaries because I was, I was scared. I thought that he was going to do something to me. He might do something to my family. He might pop up. Like I thought like, oh, if I put my boundaries down, this, that is going to happen. And in the past, if I put my boundaries down in that relationship, I always had to get physical. Like I always had to fight. I don't have no problems because that's what I seen growing up. But I realized that that's not love. If I always have to defend my boundary, I said, like, this is not, bring it on, burn. It's cold. No, this is not, that's what they say at the beginning if you never seen the movie. But anyway, like, I am not finna, no. <laughs> I'm not finna, fight for what is innately mine. Like I can, I can say, I don't want to do something. I can say no. You know what I mean? Like I can decide to leave your ass. Like if I want to, I shouldn't have to fight for my boundaries, right? How many of us are fighting to hold our boundaries up? 
That is manipulation. If you have to, if you feel something, if you are convicted to say, hey, I don't like this. Mm, I'd rather do this. I'm hold up on that. And somebody keeps trying to, that is manipulation. Coercion and getting something out of you is human trafficking. So we want to call a spade a spade. We got to call a spade a spade. So I was stuck in this human trafficking era where I was basically, a, a, because my boundaries were so loose, I was caught in this, like, I don't want to say ring because it was just me and this one guy. But he got all this knowledge from a ring that of pimps, right? So he got all this knowledge from a ring of pimps in Atlanta. And then I brought his ring of pimp knowledge having ass to D.C., <laughs> And he tried to pull all that on me. But we have a different culture in D.C. So it was like clashing. Like, I'm not just taking that. And so I'm very, I was very, like, loose on my boundaries. But once I get revved up, I don't care, remember? So I was constantly getting revved up. Oh, look at that. I was constantly getting revved up. <laughs> Sorry, I'd be cracking myself up. What? You got it. If you're listening to this, I'm just making my arms wave. That's all. It's just, you know, it's it's nothing, child, because I'm out here bare armed, okay, looking cute, and I just, I just get, I just get tickled by all kinds of stuff, child. Don't even worry about that. But anyway, if I am in this space of getting revved up to the point where I don't care, like anything could happen, type vibes. It's going to continuously be a clash, continuously be, be a, continuously be a clash, especially with somebody who doesn't respect me, respect my boundaries that I'm setting and probably doesn't have boundaries for themselves. Maybe, maybe not. That's none of our business. But anyway, let's get back to our paper. Be consistent in upholding the boundaries that you set. We talked about this a little bit, but. Um, I was talking to one of my homeboys and he was like, yeah, I go after what I want. I'm persistent. And I'm like, mm, that sounds like rape. But he was like, he was like, yeah, I'm like, that's cool in business. But when you're talking to a woman, so if I said no, as a woman, and how many of us have been through this? We said, no, mm, no, I'm trying, but I'm trying, mm -mm, I don't want to have sex. No, 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 my goodness. Uh, no, but our boundaries are loose. Like we said that and then we stayed there. We still hanging out with the person. So they go talk about something else and then they come back to it. You're trying to have sex. Come on, you know you want this. Let me just put the head in. Like just whatever little stupid stuff, right? And you like, dang, I said no. And then it starts to like pull on your boundaries, right? And then you end up saying yeah to some stuff that you didn't want to do in the first place. And then they like, oh, well, you did it. I mean, you said yeah. I mean, after you harassed me, basically. Yeah, I guess I did. That is a boundary being back, being crossed, right? That is a boundary being crossed. That is manipulation. That is not trendy. That is not how it's supposed to be. That is not love. That is a boundary being crossed. I need to say it again. That is a boundary <laughs> being crossed. When someone keeps pushing on your boundary, when you said no, that is manipulation coercion okay we, we we that's not what we want for ourselves male female otherwise don't allow nobody to keep asking you said no mean your no keep your bound if the consequence is look if you ask me again i'm leaving and they ask leave if you do that again i'm blocking you and they do it block them and don't feel bad because that is your boundary. They are disrespecting you. Oh, hey, Bo. Put the boat out there. Oh, yeah, I want to see. Uh, uh, where the boat go? I don't know. Is it? Okay. You see the boat? Okay. Never mind. But anyway. Got y'all sitting on a big candle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, I'm just, I'm just getting passionate about that because... It has happened to me. People have manipulated me. People have disregarded what I said. I said I don't want to go to this place. I said I don't want to do this thing. I said I don't want to eat this. I said I don't want to be with them. Whatever the case may be. 
right? And then I was manipulated and then I feel bad and then I hold that resentment. And so I had wrote that, that's that abstract I was talking about. Poor boundaries lead to resentment. That's why you can't stand that man. That's why you can't stand that woman because you didn't have boundaries and we got to hold ourselves accountable. We're becoming who we are destined to be. That means that we, and can't nobody do it for us. Can't nobody do it for us. We have to hope we stayed in that situation, right? Whether we didn't get a, a we needed to get a, 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 what's it called? When you go to the um, commerce, was was it? Was it? restraining order if we need to get a restraining order cool in the hood we don't look at the law i don't know what that is i don't know right we get a restraining order and then we still be around the person like yeah that don't mean nothing not that no way we still gonna kick it we're gonna live together that's still my kid you still my no respect my boundaries right and if you got that restraining order do not be manipulated into letting that person come back i was there too the restraining order was on me though. <laughs> the restraining order was on me. That, that's a whole nother story. But, right, it was only because my boundaries were crossed that I got revved up. Remember, I get revved up when they get crossed. But I have to hold accountable. I have to know that if my boundaries get crossed, I have to leave because there's a, a small window between you being in danger and me being at peace. You feel what I'm saying? Like, so if I, if you don't do what you need to do, you lose access to me because in this small window, a lot more could get lost. And we don't want that, right? Like how many of us, we don't know what happens once we get revved up. We have no idea. That's called triggered, right? That's called being triggered, right? That's called losing self-control, right? And so, we, and where we are becoming who we want to be, we have to take account for all of that. We have to take account for if this person does this thing and they keep doing this thing and manipulating me and then I feel that resentment, I may do X, Y, and Z. Or even if I don't feel resentment, sometimes we're triggered and it's just off of innate impulse, trauma, feeling like I'm in a situation where this could be dangerous, so I want to protect myself. So it's different scenarios, but do we even want to get to this side of the spectrum? No, we want to stay over here, okay? In a safe zone, right? Call this green, right? We want to stay over there. If people don't make you feel good and you start to feel like, oh, I'm questioning everything. Oh, I shouldn't have done this, that, and the third. Or you get to looking at somebody and you just, you just can't, just why is you breathing? Why you chew like that? Like, if you get to that level, it's nine times out of ten, it's because you are allowing them to manipulate you. Nine times out of ten, it's because you have loose boundaries and you have not set healthy boundaries for this relationship. If you want to keep this relationship. Some people, like me personally, my social uh, skills, I don't know, is a little bit off. So sometimes I observe, I have just observe all the time and I don't realize that this is a cue, my social cues. This is a cue for me to back the fuck up. Like, I don't even know. I just be sitting there like, <laughs> right? And then it'd be like, yeah, I'm going to need you to like, <laughs> leave. Like, <laughs> and I'd be like, oh, okay. No, you didn't say nothing. I didn't know. Just sometimes it's just people just don't know you're just right which is why i always talk about communication let's get back to this this paper dog because i don't know <sighs> but communication because i'm gonna skip to this good part because i don't want to throw you off but so how do we set the boundaries we have to define the boundary that we want if i do not like people calling me after 11 i have to make it clear i don't accept calls after 11. When I give people my number, how do I do that? When I give people my number, you know, yeah, hit me up anytime. Um, anytime between the hours of da da da, or um, girl, just text me. Just don't text me at the eleven because I don't be answering no questions. Like, you know what I mean? If you give, if I, you know, if I give you my personal number and you want to have coaching conversations, girl, we're gonna have to talk about that um, in a session. Setting the boundaries. If you want to know about me and what I'm doing and how I feel, what's going on with me, hit my line. If you just want to talk about 
coaching and business and everything else, girl, hit my calendar. All right, because I need to be in a different mind zone for that. I'm going to put on a different hat for that. That's going to take a different amount of time and you might get charged for that. So depending on your boundaries, right? Communicating what you need. I kind of said that. I said we define it. We need to tell that person. We need to tell people, whoever comes in this, these are our, our T and, and T and C's, our terms and conditions. Like, okay, you can come over to my house, but you got to be here by 1 a.m. because I'll be getting out of my bed after 1. Communicate that. Don't just say, hey, I can come stay with you, but then never tell me that I have to be here by 1 a.m. Because then I get here at one thirty, and you like, oh, bro, it's too late. Why would you? Like, which I live here, though. Like, I live here now. So <laughs> you got to get up. But if you had set that boundary beforehand, then I would know, okay, cool. I got to be there by one. That's reasonable. You feel what I'm saying? Like, whatever it takes me to be. Kids, keep it simple. Keep it simple. Don't be explaining, oh, my goodness, you know, you got to be in at one because, you know, I got to get up at six and I got to get the girls ready and da 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 da, da. I go to bed at one. <laughs> be in by one. That's it. That's it. Okay? Keep it simple, stupid. I'm just... I call these stupid, but that's the, the acronym. It's KISS. But, you know, keep it simple, sweetie. That's the one. All right. Um, And then set your, your consequence. Need you to be in by one. Um, If not, you know, I need you to be in by one because I, I, cause I don't get a bit get it. Because I want you to also tell people why. Because there's a difference in hurry up, y'all. We got to go and hurry up, y'all. We got to go catch this bus. We don't want to miss this bus. That put a little more oomph in whoever you're talking to step. So give them why, but keep it simple. Hey, if you want to be standing over here, that's cool. Just make sure you be in by one because I go to bed at one. That's it. If you don't, you're not going to be able to get in until probably like six, seven. And I'm stern on that. And so if somebody comes in at 105, oh, come on, it's just 105. Girl, no. Boy, no. I'm sorry. I don't know. It's, a, it's something on the back porch. You can thug it out. I don't know. Can't, you can't come here tonight. So sorry. Love you, though. Next time, be here by one. And be stern. You still up. You can help me. Da -da -da. All that. Right? I can. I could, but I won't. And I don't care because I specifically told you already what I needed. And you thought my boundaries were going to be loose. So you did whatever you wanted. You made those decisions that has nothing to do with me. Good night. Right? Sounds a little harsh, but do we want to enable somebody and have them codependent on us? Or do we want to give them, you know, help them strengthen their legs so they can run? Right. So look at my paper, y'all. Look at my paper. Um, so we talked about how to set the boundaries, setting those boundaries, saying why it's important and being stern, following through on the consequence. Hey, you can't stay here tonight. I don't know. But when I wake up at seven, I'll open the door for you. You know what I mean? Something like that. Um, I am not responsible for others' emotional health. I can only behave in a morally righteous way and strive to be human and strive to be a humanly example of change. Therefore, I cannot fix it and won't bend my non-negotiables to try to fix it. That's pretty much the example that I gave. I, like the fact that you thought that I was playing about that one o'clock thing has nothing to do with me. I'm so sorry that you felt that way and that you took me as a joke, but I'll see you at seven or whenever you come around. These are my boundaries. And I know that you have loose boundaries or you're used to dealing with people that may have loose boundaries, but these are my boundaries. And once you keep stern in them and know that, hey, listen, if it's really an emergency, you can call 911. They're always up. I go to bed at one, but they're always up. <laughs> okay. So you can call 911 and get some more assistance if that's what you need. Right. And um, I don't, I don't care whether it's spring, summer, winter, or fall, I do not care. Because if you cared enough, why would I care more than you? 
Like, let's be real. Why would I care more than you? So if you didn't care enough to get here by that certain time, and we understand there are exceptions to every rule. What if they work late? And I can tell you a whole bunch of reasons. Absolutely. This is still a boundary. So if there was an issue beforehand, we should we, we should have talked about it. Hey, I get off at 1230. Might not be able to get there by one. Is there any way you could leave the key under the back porch, under the mat, tape to the top of the door handle, something like that, right? We would, we would set something in place ahead of time. It wouldn't be at that same time. Like, oh, come on, I had to work. Come on. You didn't communicate. It's about communication. You didn't communicate to that, that to me ahead of time, right? So I didn't have that in my head. So I'm in the mind space of going to bed right now. So I'm not going to do whatever it is you want me to do because I'm in this different mind space. Mind space. Right. So. Do not do not be fooled by people that's trying to manipulate you. That's that's really what I want to say. Um, have your non-negotiables. If that's your bedtime, that's a non-negotiable. If you have some things that some boundaries that are a little more flexible, like mm, my boundary is don't eat my food um, unless you ask. Or but uh, I'm not really tripping. I just want to know so I can know what to get while I'm out. Like I don't want to feel like I got some chicken in there or whatever the case may be. And I go in there and it's not in there. Like I'm not tripping, but you get what I'm saying? Like some are looser than others, but then you have some non-negotiables. Hey, I go to bed at this time. I wake up at this time. I need to be quiet. That's my non-negotiable. It needs to be quiet. If I hear stuff and it's waking me up, I'm going to wake up tripping. Okay. You're going to put me in this direction where I'm in the red and I'm going to be aggressive and I don't want to be hyped. So in order for me not to do that, I don't even, I want my boundaries set and I'm serious on them so that you never cross them again. Because I never want to be in a space where I have to constantly protect my energy. If I'm wherever I'm at, I should be at peace. Okay. Anyway, let's keep moving. Boundaries create safety. And it's a skill to setting boundaries, healthy boundaries. Um, for me, one of the things, confidence, like I had to have the confidence to set the boundaries, to say, oh, no, nah. to say, no, nah, you actually, I'm not buying frames. Like, I don't care if you're not trying to be around me. Cool. Right. To say, actually, I like being by self. So if you want to abandon me, cool. That shows me where your head is at. Right. So having the confidence, um, ceasing my low self-worth. So understanding that I'm worth whatever it is that I say that I need. If I need you to call me before you go to bed and work together, then that's what I need. If I need um, whatever my boundary is within reason, like that, don't go crazy and be like, hey, you didn't build me an Eiffel Tower, Eiffel Tower. So you cross my back. Like, no, not just any old thing, but knowing my self-worth enough to know that I deserve respect, right? I deserve my definition of respect. And um, even when I say that, it's like, I want the world to have a common ground definition, but a lot of times we don't. So what, how do I want to feel? Like, what does respect look like to me? Being able to communicate that and then having somebody reciprocate that, right? That's a healthy boundary. Um, and we talked about buying friends or people pleasing, disappointing them folks, disappoint them folks, like disappoint them folks. Okay. Do you know how many people I have disappointed? I don't care because at the end of the day, I'm here by myself. <laughs> Somebody might be watching and Hey y'all, but I'm here by myself at the end of the day. So if I disappoint you, okay. That's like, at the end of the day, are you truly a friend? Are you true? Is this, is this a long lasting relationship? Because as a person who's becoming, I'm going to disappoint you. I disappoint myself. I'm growing every single day. You should be too. If you're not contradicting yourself, then what are we doing? Right? Disappoint them. Stop buying friends. Stop trying to feel accepted. Look at your trauma. Why? When, when I go through something, when I feel something, I ask myself, why? Why am I doing this? Why do I want to be seen? Why do I want to spend this money on this person? Why do I want to give this person this money? Why don't I? What, whatever it is, right? 
Yes, Chimes. Give it to me. Ow. Okay, so looking at my paper. Disappointing folks. And we talked about some things that can kind of give us loose boundaries. So having fear of rejection and abandonment, confrontation, guilt, feeling like, oh man, I should have took him. Like, how can I? Like when I think about the the relationship that I was in, and I, sometimes I'm like, dang. You know, maybe it was me, or maybe I did this, that, and the third. And it's like, no, but a lot of your boundaries, like, if all of your boundaries were crossed, like, and you expressed them, and they were constantly crossed, and then you got to this point where you had to turn up, or you had to stand up for yourself, you should never feel guilt. And I know you might feel it, because I feel it too. But constantly tell yourself that that was the right thing to do. You have to remove yourself from a situation that is not serving you, that is not protecting you, that is not keeping you safe. You must remove yourself. Right? So that's something that I did. Absolutely. Absolutely. And then not knowing or never taught. Um, I come from a household, like I said. My mom, I remember when she started to build her boundaries, but growing up and understand that children gain their personality up to the age of seven. So whatever you are doing around your child up to the age of seven, that is what they're paying attention to. That is what you're training them to do. They are observing. They don't have to have the articulation to observe the, the, the behaviors. So when I grew up, I didn't see my mother have boundaries. So then as I got older and over time, her dealing with the same man, you know, how it goes, uh, I saw her start to develop the boundaries. So, you know, my dad was taking advantage. He was manipulating. But if you look at his perspective, he doesn't feel like it. He just felt like he was being persistent, like my homeboy was saying. Like he's doing whatever he needs to do to get what he got to get, not taking into account anybody else's feelings or boundaries. Based on the definition of having low empathy, that would be considered narcissistic. We all are narcissistic, but it's a spectrum. So when I see somebody who really can't see the fact that they are manipulating constantly, and again, if you look at my first uh, video, I talk about this where I used to be there, but it takes us healing to bring ourselves down on this, on the scale where we're just focused on self. I'm just trying to get it. Like, I'm just persistent. Like I ain't what, <laughs> you know, you ain't dead. You ain't say nothing was wrong. Like, what? right. And so pressing those boundaries, pressing those boundaries. So creating that healthy boundary means one seeking information looking at other people that you admire, how they do things and not feeling jealous, but feeling inspired by their behaviors. And then looking and seeing what are they doing? How are they getting respect like that? How are they getting whatever it is that they're getting that you want? That's what I do personally. So coming from that place, not knowing how to um, set boundaries, having boundaries set on myself and not understanding what they were actually for. And then getting into my own relationship where it, boundaries were needed and not knowing that that's the thing to have um sometimes that could be a culprit for why we don't have healthy boundaries why our boundaries are so loose because we just never seen boundaries we just didn't know that you could advocate for yourself in such a way Sometimes we're just really conditioned to society and we think we're supposed to do what everybody else wants us to do and that's not the case so that and then safety concerns. And I talked about that earlier, like being in a relationship where I don't know if he's going to try to come after me, my family, what's going on. So I'm constantly putting my, my boundaries on the back burner and because I'm walking on eggshells. That is a dangerous situation. If you need help, please reach out to the domestic violence hotline. I will put the the number in the bio, because I don't know it by heart. Um, but you know what? Because if you're watching this right now, I, I don't want you to have to do too much. You feel what I'm saying? And um, 
You know what I'm saying? Like, you know how about calling the police and asking for a pizza? Like, it's the same situation, girl. We talk about whatever. Mm-hmm, yeah. So they come on by. I got you. Mm-hmm. We talking about hair, okay? Because I just washed mine and literally put it in this bun. This would it be looking like freshly washed. But this is the number. 1-800-799-7233. You can also text START to 88788. Again, if you're driving, that's 1-800-799-7233. Or text START to 88788. So, for domestic violence assistance. So, it's real out here. And sometimes we don't feel like, um, sometimes it's, we, this, this is another topic, but I'm going to go into this just a little bit. Sometimes when we're in a domestic violence situation, we don't, we feel, um, what's that word? When you feel, it's not jealous when you feel, um, when you don't want to tell nobody what's going on, you're in secretive, like, like, oh, how, how did I get here? Like type of thing. Like, I can't think of the word right now, but when you're feeling um, defeated, when you're feeling, dang, I cannot think about this word. That is crazy. But when you feel like insecure to your situation, you don't want to share what's really going on. You, you can call these hotlines. You, you can DM me. Like, I've been there. I understand what's going on. Um, maybe not to every severity, but I've definitely been there. So just understanding that you're not alone. Sometimes we feel like, oh, girl, no, that's not me. That's not domestic. He just X, Y, and Z. She just X, Y, and Z. No, that's dangerous. X, Y, and Z can get dangerous real quick. You know, it can get dangerous real quick because you don't understand that Ted Bundy, is that his name, was a psychopath or was he a sociopath? Either one, they're both really dangerous. Um, he looked regular. He's like a regular guy. So when you think about that and you're out here in these streets and you and you dating these people, you know, whether they come from the streets, whether they come from the colleges, wherever they come from, understand, understand that a narcissist is created by a person who was either overindulged or underindulged. They did not get what they needed to be a productive person or they got too much and they are spoiled and they want the whole world to treat them the exact same way or you are beneath them, right? So when you think about that, then you get into a manipulant narcissist, then you get into a sociopath and then a psychopath. They look regular. It looks like your mama. <laughs> you feel me? It looked like your sister. It looked like your boyfriend. It looked like your girlfriend. It looks like your teacher. It looks like the garbage man. It looks, it doesn't, nothing is like different, right? There is a, there is a, they just are regular. These people canoeing and I don't know, can they hear me? Like, am I loud? What's happening? Just, cause they just turned around and started looking up here. Like, <laughs> like, what's up? So how y'all doing? Just okay, but really, I I just want I just want to express that so much because it doesn't look like anything. So when I'm saying it's important because your safety is important because you don't know what that man gonna do. There was a there was um this girl, she was working at T Mobile and Clinton, and this some years ago. This guy, her boyfriend, came in there with a Sprite bottle full of acid. I don't know where people be getting all this acid from. You know how people be throwing acid on people all the time? Like, where the fuck do you get acid from like that? Like, why do you just have acid? That is crazy to me. But anyway, he went into her job and threw it on her face, burnt her face. Just, you know, acid did what it did, right? To me, that's a, that's psychopath, no empathy, very controlling, domestic situation. And it's like, Sometimes we 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 see the signs, but we don't think that that person can go that serious. That's the only reason why I'm bringing it up. We don't think that, that a person. I'm getting chills, but we only think we don't think that a person can go. Uh, they like they wouldn't do that to us. They will, right? They will, and you can see it in the signs of how they treat you, how controlling they are, how manipulative they are, right? 
how they respect you, how they respect your boundaries, right? These are things that we have to look at when we are vetting somebody, right? When, when we are dating, even if we are together and you start seeing these signs, oh, I'm out, <laughs> okay? Because my safety is important. So boundaries is saying, I see these things, right? And even though I'm attached, and sometimes that attachment comes with trauma bonding. You were there when I needed X, Y, and Z and nobody else was there. We bonded over liquor, weed, sex, money, mayhem, right? Like understanding where you are and how you got in this moment is also a part of your boundaries for yourself. So I hope nobody's dealing with any of those issues. And if we have, we have grown from it, right? Because I know some of us, we, we, we've all dealt with some type of issue that whether it's emotional, physical, domestic, some type of abuse has happened. I, I just hope that we have all overcome that. And we are now trying to become the person that we are destined to be so that we can change the world, just a trajectory, just a little bit, so that that doesn't happen to the next people that to come. Um, that's, 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 that's what I'm trying to do. I don't know about you, but if I can help you, if anything that I said helped you, resonated with you, please, please let me know, because that means that I'm just on the right path, and if you don't want to let me know, that's cool, thumbs this, thumbs this up, I appreciate you watching, let me make sure that my paper is uh complete, we talked about the boundaries, now boundaries can be physical, okay, it can be six feet, hey, COVID, what you doing, <laughs> it could be emotional, don't say duh to me, Somebody told me that one time, and it just kind of threw me off. Like, duh? I don't like when people say duh. And she was like, it makes me feel stupid. Okay, I could see that. Went, went, and then I said, I had never said duh, and I recently said duh, and, it, and I thought about her. Somebody said something to me, and I was like, duh. Like, and it's like, oh, wow, I see how that could make somebody feel stupid. Like, how the fuck do I know? <laughs> like, why are you saying duh to me? Like, did the person do the X, Y thing or not? Answer the question. Don't say duh. Like, <laughs> But I never put two or two together until like very recently. But yes, that is a boundary. That is a boundary. That is emotional boundary. Do not make me, do not say that to me because that triggers me to feel like I'm stupid. Maybe something in my past, in my childhood, people used to do that to me. And so now as an adult, I don't play that. I don't like that. I have a say so over my life, who I allow in my life, how, how I, what is what in, what media I'm taking in, and that includes people. If you're a person that cuss 24 seven, I don't necessarily want to be around you because though I cuss a little bit, I'm just not out here like, like you know what I'm saying. Like in my head, I was like mother mother, like yeah. But <laughs> but look 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 look. Physical, emotional, sexual. If I said no, if I said no, if I said no. No, okay? That means if we chilling, everything good, we done had a great day, and then I pull up at your house and you like, hey, you want to go in? You, can I get you here? Can you get me here? You want to rub on this thing? You just randomly whip out your dick. What's ha what's happening? <laughs> what is ha What is happening, right? I know. No. No. I've had all of that. I've had people be like, yeah, man, them lips, look at that, all that, just dumb shit, you know, I, I really want, I, I didn't, been chilling, and somebody pull their dick out, just, you want to rub it, no, the fuck I don't, like, that is so disrespectful, that is so disrespectful, and I get so angry, like, I'm going, Lorraine and Bobbitt, y'all better leave me alone, <laughs> like, leave me alone, stop, that's disrespectful, and so that shows me where your mentality is at, Right. And then you only see me for sex. Like you don't see the value that I bring. Oh, well, that's a part of my boundary. I don't want to hang with anybody who don't see the value that I bring. You can't even fathom the value, the value that I bring. You think that I'm a trophy wife? Me? <laughs> you think that that's the only thing I'm here for to sit and look and make you look good? Me? Mm -mm. I add value to wherever I come. I add value. You may not know what kind of value yet, but you're going to find out. Okay. If you treat me right and respect my boundaries. Thank you. So. Boundaries can be what? Physical, emotional, and sexual. Do not let nobody try to talk you into something when you say you wasn't. If you are celibate, stay celibate. Don't be celibate. Just stay celibate. You feel me? Like, people, and I'm, and I'm talking about these, these kids, they try to tell me all the type of stuff. Yeah, I took her, took her uh, two blunts. 
she fit to top me off. Like she, so you bought it for some, like boundaries, bro. Like boundaries. And then some of us as women or men, we don't know our boundaries. So we let people talk us into anything. Uh, yeah, I'm going to bring you $20 in a blunt, you know, and they'll say nothing about the sex, but when they get there, now you feel obligated. No, I didn't say anything about any of that. It's, I don't know what you, you better call somebody else. Call Tyro. You better call somebody because it ain't me. All right. So, <laughs> all right. I feel like that was a good little talk though. I feel like that was a good little talk. Um, Just focus on yourself. I wrote that down. I need when you're setting your boundaries. Don't be like, you doing too much and this, that, and the third. You disrespecting? No, just simply very eloquently state what you need. Hey, when I get off work, I just need an hour to myself before I give you a call, before I come in the house, before I come out my room. Hey, I need to go to bed at 1 a.m., so I just need you to be here before that time. Hey, I need whatever it is that you need. Express what you need. Your needs matter. You matter. Your needs matter. You matter. So don't expect somebody to be, um, and I, and you know, my family will tell you, I, I don't get physical or, you know, disrespectful or anything like that, but I'm just going to be like, did you think that I was a mind reader? <laughs> you didn't tell me. <laughs> so let's try that again. This is you telling me the situation and communicating the boundary. And so the next time I should be good on that. If I have questions, I'll let you know, but you can't just expect me to just know you because you, you, like, you know you. I don't know, like, I may know of you. I may have observed you a little bit, but I don't know the inner outer courts and everything that you feel. So you have to tell people and express to people what it is you need, right? And give them the benefit of the doubt. If you did not express that, don't kirk off. Or I hate, I, ooh, I, don't, I don't like that. When you kirk off in someone and you didn't know, and they, they had no idea that this was a thing that triggered you, that bothered you, that, you know what I'm saying? Give people the benefit of the doubt, but be clear and stern when you do. Not, not stern, like, you better, like, focus on you. Remember, I need X, Y, and Z because, and if I don't, consequence, and be stern on that consequence. Don't switch up. Don't hold the boundary for two months and then two months later, get back flexible. You have to be intentional about this, intentional about protecting your energy, intentional about teaching people how to treat you. If you need help, come through. Legacy Leap is open. The accountability group, we are open. We are posting pictures. We are having master classes. We meet daily, okay? We do our full week schedule on Sundays on Zoom. This is something that you want to be a part of. Why? Because community is how we build up everything. <laughs> Essentially, every Rome wasn't built in a day. You know why? Because they need a community, okay? Community got to sleep, rest, process, and go through it again the next day. So community is where I have been becoming who I'm destined to be because it's, it's people that's actually there to keep me accountable. I, I can talk about everything, whether it's business, uh, mindset, fitness, we have something for it all. And so we are literally becoming who we're destined to be based on the goals that we set for ourselves. People are holding us accountable based on the goals that we set for ourselves. So coming into a space and saying, hey, I want to set boundaries and this is how I'm going to do it. I want to go to the gym multiple days a week, and this is how I'm going to do it. And then actually taking pictures and showing myself there, showing up for myself, showing up for myself. So that is so important. That is so important. Self-investment, investing in myself to be in this group so that I can make sure that I actually do the work. Legacy Leap is about doing the work. So if you want to do the work with me, join my group, Legacy Leap. That's legacy with two L's, leap, leaders, executing on awareness and prospering, okay? Because it is serious out here. It's time for us to execute on our awareness because we know things, we feel things, and now it's time to set them in motion. So execute, set your boundaries, 
Uh, I actually am going to update my um, website. I'll update my, I'll update my website and I'm going to add some PDFs so that it can help you actually go through and um, create your boundaries, figure out why you need boundaries, what kind of boundaries do you have, and so that we can build this up together. If you need more assistance, catch the link in the bio. Come here with me on the Melanated Hypothesis Podcast and the Legacy Leap Group. You know, I got a book out. Come on, bro. Like, it's time. It's time. We're not letting nobody else play us no more. We're going to be held accountable. And this is our year. So if this is your year, stay tapped in. Make sure you like and subscribe. And thank you so much, as always, for watching. I'm proud of you. I'm super, 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 super proud of you. Because you are working on yourself. You are seeking the information. And that is bold. It is beautiful. And it is beyond great. Like, it is just magical. So. I shall see you next time. Keep doing what you're doing. Let's get better with every day. Peace and healing, y'all. I am out.